Welcome to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska. Today we're going to broadcast the second part of an academic paper which came out in the Hungarian Historical Review, volume three, number two, back in 2014. The paper's been written by Maya Gori, and the title of the paper is Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the Macedonian Question. Today is part two of three-part series dedicated to the Macedonian question by Maya Gori. Memory construction in Greece. There's abundant literature devoted to the analysis of archeology span and national identity in Greece. Greece may be considered the European paradigm state of those cultural and political practices where the construction of national identity had massive recourse to the um, archeological narrative. One of the traits of the Greek national identity building is the relation between global and local cultural dynamics. This has characterized the modern Greek state and its identity construction from its very beginnings. Following Hamilakis, one can distinguish different sets of Hellenisms. The new Hellenism, which was imported into Greece in the late 18th and uh, early 19th centuries, and what Hamalikas calls the indigenous Hellenism, the appropriation of Western Hellenism by local societies in Greece in the mid to late 19th century and its recasting as a novel and quasi-religious form of imagining time and place, past and present of producing and reproducing national identities. One of the symbols of this global local um, identity process is the Parthenon, which holds a double significance as a national and universal monument. Another example of the double status of ancient Greece as local and global you, the memoir, is the holding of the first Olympic Games of the modern era in Greece in 1896. The modern Olympic, um, the modern Olympic Games were conceived as the revival of the ancient games, linking ancient history and classical topoi to modern Greece. That event projected Greece into international modernity as the legitimate heir of the classical world, conceived as the cradle of Western culture. This image was proposed again in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in 2004, when, and I quote, emphasis on continuity, uh, though with a certain antique bias, a celebration of the old time classic Greek ideal, albeit in its consummation through art and allusion to some of the eternal Greek values, such as democracy, the theater or Christian faith were all suitably packaged for worldwide broadcast and PG audiences throughout. It is not only in popular depictions of antiquity where modern Greece is represented as the legitimate heir of classical Greece. The website www.macedonia-evidence.org can be regarded as a good example of how this image 
is also deeply rooted in academia. This website, which is promoted by scholars who support the Greek nationalist position on the new Macedonian question, presents the ancient Macedonians as Greeks and links ancient and modern Greece through an unbroken line of racial and cultural continuity, concluding that only modern Greeks have the right to identify themselves as Macedonians. The use of the name Macedonia is conceived as an act of plagiarism against the Greek people, and by calling themselves Macedonians, the Slavs are stealing a Greek name and falsifying Greek history. The website features the letter to President Obama, quoted in the introduction of this paper. It claims that the recognition of the Republic of Macedonia not only abrogated geographic and historical fact, but it also has unleashed a dangerous epidemic of historical revisionism, of which the most obvious symptom is the misappropriation by the government in Skopje of the most famous of Macedonians, Alexander the Great. The letter goes on to argue that Macedonia and Macedonian Greeks have been located for at least two and a half years just where the modern Greek province of Macedonia is. Exactly this same relationship is true for Attica and Athenian Greeks, Argos and Argive Greeks, Corinth and Corinthian Greeks, etc. Alexander the Great was thoroughly and indisputably Greek, they say. Alexander the Great was Greek, not Slavic, and Slavs and their language no, were nowhere near Alexander or his homeland until a thousand years later, they say. This brings us back to the geographic area known as antiquity in antiquity as Paeonia. Why would the people who live there now call themselves Macedonian and their land Macedonia? Why would they abduct a completely Greek figure and make him their national hero? Now, this was contained in the letter that the academics sent to President Obama. Together with documents selected from ancient sources, the letter to President Obama is available both in digital and hard copy to a larger non-specialist public with the title Macedonia-Evidence. As underlined by Frank Holt in the prologue of the book, featured on the home page of the site, at the very least, Mr. Presidents and Madam Secretaries and peoples of the world, please consider carefully the contents of this book and the credentials of those who have contributed to it, they said. Several scholars responded positively to the plea of Stephen G. Miller, the author of the letter to Obama. Hmm? Just repeating the name again. Stephen G. Miller, the author of the letter to Obama. And uh, he signed that letter. Among the negative reactions was a short response paper by Andreas Willy. In a counter answer, Miller concludes, Miller concludes with a bitter criticism of Willy's positions, arguing that these statements are dot, 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 a real threat to the fundamentals of our profession as classical scholars. If historical integrity is not important to our society, then neither are we, he responded to Willie's letter. Another but different case of direct involvement of the scholarship in the new Macedonian question is described by Danworth, who was invited as speaker at the first International Congress on Macedonian Studies held in 1988 at La Trobe University in Melbourne. Hmm. 
We remember that time. He described the symposium as a thinly veiled attempt to provide academic legitimacy to the Greek national position on what is generally known as the Macedonian question. The Congress, which was advertised in a Greek Macedonian diaspora publication in clear political terms, attracted to its opening ceremony a huge number of Slav Macedonians or Slav demonstra Macedonian demonstrators carrying signs reading pro-Macedonian slogans. What is relevant to the topic discussed here is not the validity of the scientific conclusions proposed by the scholars, but their voluntary or involuntary commitment to present political issues. Indeed, it is clear that the position expressed by a significant proportion of Western scholars on the new Macedonian question concerns present Greek and Macedonian identities rather than ancient ones. On the other hand, cultural policies carried on by the Greek state and the insistence on identifying modern Greece with classical Greece, appropriating an origin so distant in time, are efforts which show how much concern there is to justify the contemporary existence of the state of Greece and its place in the Western world. Indeed, the Greeks the Greek state has played a fundamental role in national identity construction since the 19th century, promoting archaeology above all else as identity building tool. This is evident, for example, from an analysis of the narratives of the past reflected in the new Acropolis Museum. These narratives are clearly driven by an ambitious ideological agenda for the nation's past. The new Acropolis Museum complements the national classi uh, classicization, the author says, classicization project still in progress on the Acropolis and acts as its counterpart in a game of mirrors between the past and the present. The modern Greek state, through the systemic creation of virtual ruins, such as the Parthenon and the other monuments on the Athenian Acropolis, is attempting the instrumentalization of its classical heritage for the edification of its citizens as well as its visitors. This is achieved through the kind of classist, uh, classist agenda as was pursued in the Western world in the 19th century. Dimitri Planzos expresses robust criticism of the new Acropolis Museum, which ends up being a representation of what modernity ought to look like, or in fact, a parody of what modernity actually is. The promotion of national narratives of the past in the new polycentric museum of Aigai is of particular relevance to the new Macedonian question. Great effort was put into having Agai, uh, Vergina, the ancient first capital of the kingdom of Macedonia, adopted on the World Heritage List. Significantly, the site was inscribed in 1996, a few years after the outbreak of the name issue with the then newly born Republic of Macedonia. In the website of the new polycentric museum of, of Agai, the royal capital of Macedon, or Vergina, um, one can find a wonderful and comprehensive set of information on ancient Macedonia. Reinforcing the symbolic importance of Agai Vergina in the new Macedonian question is the identification <coughs> excuse me, as one of the royal tombs of the great tumulus as the tomb of Philip II, who conquered all the Greek cities, paving the way for his son Alexander and the expansion of the Hellenistic world. The presentation of the palace of Agai together with the Parthenon as being the most significant building of classical Greeks, 
constructs a powerful ideological link between what the present idea of Hellenic ideology or identity sees as the two capital cities representative of both ancient and modern Greekness, Agai and Athens. The website conveys the spectacular archaeological findings and the museum displays through visual and verbal language that leaves no doubt of the ideology underlying this great narrative of the past. Memory construction in ex-Yugoslavia and the Republic of Macedonia, in brackets, Phyron. Archaeology and its role in identity construction and political discourse have been the subject of much less analysis in ex-Yugoslavia than they have been in Greece. Some work on the new Macedonian question and the utilization of uh, ancient Macedonian heritage and ancient Macedonian symbols has been published in recent years, but very little of this deals with issues from a Macedonian perspective. In the early 1990s, when many citizens of ex-Yugoslavia perceived the contrast between the accelerating political integration of the European Union and the violent broke up of Yugoslavia in the subsequent war, which uh, culminated in the dreadful ethnic cleansing, archaeologists again became interested in the relation of their subject with nationalism, ethnicity, and identity. Competing versions of ethnic and cultural identities were at the basis of competing claims for territorial sovereignty in the Yugoslav conflict. Cultural heritage was presented as evidence of those claims. From the middle of the 1990s, there was a steady proliferation of books and papers devoted to these topics. Interestingly, in discussing the significance of the concept of identity and its application to the past, the authors frequently mention the Yugoslav wars as an emblematic example, but never go into depth on ex-Yugoslavia itself. For example, in the work of P. Graves Brown, S. Jones and C. Gamble, ex-Yugoslavia appears throughout the volume as a reference for archaeology and identity issues mainly in relation to nationalist discourses, ethnicity and xenophobia, but no chapter deals specifically with the topic. Together with Marxist and Soviet approaches, archaeology in ex-Yugoslavia was strongly influenced by the German school, a colloquialism which can be used to group different approaches to archaeology in use in German-speaking countries the Austrian influences which dominated archaeology and antiquities in the Western Balkans in the 19th century gave way to the imposition of German archaeological scientific standards in the 20th. This is clearly shown by Predrag Novakovic, who was analyzed, he has analyzed the background of more than 90% of all archaeological um, of all archaeologists or archaeological professionals working in Western Balkans in the period 1870 to 1945 to determine who was most influential. Before World War II, the striking majority of scholars active in what uh, would become Yugoslavia graduated or received their PhDs in Austrian or German universities. With some simplification, it can be argued that the focus of the German approach to archaeology was on two major units of obs observation, the artifact itself and culture as a particular assemblage of artifacts in time and space, implying a particular sociocultural, frequently ethnic or ethnic-like grouping of peoples. Priority was given to those aspects of the archaeological uh, past, which were perceived as instrumental for explaining national history and ethnogenesis or the ethnic history of specific territory. Even though Yugoslavia, uh, Yugoslavian, the author says, archaeology distanced itself from the most um, uh, extreme theories of the German culture history approach, the German school 
played an important role in influencing archaeological research. The Yugoslav regime supported and promoted archaeology as an instrument for emancipating the Yugoslav nations and promoting the achievements of the new society. It adopted a Marxist approach to archaeology. In this way, the, inter the interpretative framework of ethnogenesis in use in Yugoslav archaeology resulted from a mixture of pre-war German culture history and Marxist and Soviet approaches blended with local backgrounds. For example, Illyrians were seen as macro-ethnic group made up of a heterogeneous and culturally loosely linked tribes inhibiting Roman Illyricum, whose unification into a single ethos, ethnos was prevented by the Roman occupation completed in the early first century uh, CE. The Illyrian past was set up as a parallel with the ideology of socialist federal Yugoslavia, pervaded by brotherhood, brotherhood and unity and made up of different but akin nations bound by a joint political structure. Regional and political issues and conflicts such as the Serbian-Albanian conflict over Kosovo were similarly projected into the past through the debate over the ethnic origins of the Dardanians, a people who inhabited the area in antiquity. However, the early medieval Slavic period rather than the Iron Age represented the focal point for archaeological investigation in Yugoslavia, as well as for its nation building policy. The deconstruction of the Illyrians and of other archaeological discourses which had been shaped by Yugoslav ideology began when the geopolitical frame of Yugoslavia started to dissolve in 1970, says the author. The decentralized constitution of 1974 and the subsequent disintegration of a compact Yugoslav identity favored the rise of nationalism in the 1980s. In some cases, the academic community participated actively in the creation of the nationalist agendas and contributed to the development of new collective identities which would serve what was understood as the interest of a nation. One such case was the backing of Milosevic's nationalistic uh, policy by the Serbian Academy of Science and Arts. As a member of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Macedonia was regarded as marginal to the archaeological discourse um, <clears throat> in Yugoslav ethnogenesis, which concentrated on more central areas. Indeed, the use of archaeology to support national identity construction in the Republic of Macedonia is a relatively new phenomenon, but it has steadily increased since the Declaration of Independence in 1991. In sharp contrast to the nation building process of the Greeks, Serbians and Bulgarians whose main ideological components were drawn from a glorious past. Glorious past is in quotations. Macedonian nationalism in the mid 20th century looked to an equally glorious future, in quotations, glorious future. Only after independence was the birth date um, of the Macedonian nation moved back from the foundation of IMRO and the 1903 Linden uprising to the fourth century BCE. The emphasis of Alexander the Great as the father of the modern Macedonian nation started to be widely used following the victory of Vemero de Pemene in the 2006 general election. A few years after the 1991 declaration of independence, the Iron Age origins of the Macedonians began to make a strong appearance in scientific literature, thanks largely to the scholarly work of D. Mitrevsky, an ethnogenetic and historical interpretation of the Iron Age material culture led E. Petrova to recognize that the bridges, an ancient ethnos poorly studied by the international academic world were the direct ancestors of the 
Ionians, who were in turn identified as the direct ancestors of the Macedonians. It is indicative that in the second volume of Civilizatsi na Pochvata na Macedonia, the Hellenistic and Roman periods are completely absent, while pre-proto-history in the Middle Ages are thoroughly covered. Uh, scholarly attention to the 5th and 4th centuries BC E has rapidly increased in the last decade, resulting in the increasing preference for the Hellenistic period as the golden age of the present Macedonian nation. The Scorpion 2014 campaign was launched by the government of the Republic of Macedonia in 2010. And this is aimed at giving the city of Skopje a classical style through the construction of new public and government buildings. Skopje city center, Skopje City Center has been adorned with a large number of statues, of which the most important is undoubtedly the impressive uh, Voina Coin, warrior on the horse, which occupies the ideological and physical center of Plostad Macedonia, or Macedonian Square. The old museum, uh, Museina Macedonia, located in the heart of the Stara Chargia, the old city has been uh, relocated in a new neoclassical building specifically built on the northern shore of the Vardar River, opposed to Plostad Macedonia. The government's antiquization policy, however, does not seem to enjoy the direct support of Macedonian archaeologists and historians, with some significant exceptions. Research conducted by the Institute of Social Sciences and Humanities of the Skopje University, led by Kay Kolozova, shows that archaeologists, together with other professionals of different disciplines, express a strong negative opinion on the Skopje 2014 project and the antiquization campaign. Although the Hellenistic period occupies a prominent part in the neonalistic discourse, um, I beg your pardon, in the nationalistic discourse, there are new excavations and projects to appraise the archaeological heritage as a whole. As well as the new archaeological museum in Skopje, the last decade has been the establishment, has seen the establishment of several new archaeological open air museums in key sites of the country. The most uh, recent uh, or significant of these, or at least the newest and largest, are Tumba Majari near Skopje and Ohrit, where an entire pile dwelling settlement has been completely reconstructed. Tumba Majari is an outstanding early Neolithic site located in the Gazi Baba municipality of Skopje. There have been several exceptional findings since the first archaeological excavations directed by Voislav Sanev in 1978. Walking through the open air museum, one can drive into an 8,000 year old world in in four fully equipped reconstructions of prehistoric huts, huts where everyday scenes are recreated with life-size mannequins. Throughout the website of Tumba Majari Open Air Museum, it is stressed that the settlement of Tumba Majari Open Air Museum um, is the uh, protogenic core of today's Skopje. It is significant uh, that the great mother the terracotta idol, which has made Tumba Majari famous to a worldwide community of specialists, is represented on the frieze decorating Porta Macedonia, uh, a triumphal arch located on Pella Square in Skopje. And uh, we will continue this uh, academic paper by um, this uh, author, on the Macedonian question uh, next uh, time. So in our next broadcast, we'll be uh, doing part three and we will be completing all three parts. Um, uh, the paper by Maya Gori uh, titled Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the New Macedonian Question published back in 2014. Thanks uh, for listening. I'll see you soon.